apologies in advance for all of the noise on the video in this. I'm still learning and I fucked up my camera settings, sorry. Are you worried that your YouTube relevance may be on the decline? Are you looking to make a splash without being called a fascist by JK Rowling on Twitter? Well, luckily there's a very simple solution. Pick one of your least popular opinions and make a video about it. That's bound to go well, right? So about four months ago, PewDiePie released a video about why he doesn't like Marvel films. And if there's one thing the internet definitely needs, it's more people responding to it. Thoughts that should not be controversial. I don't like Marvel movies. Oh no. How do I preface this video without getting any hate? If you like uh, Marvel movies, don't worry, that's your opinion, and I just have mine. Okay, that is refreshing to hear. It's certainly refreshing after watching RNS Entertainment's video on Infinity War where he calls everyone who likes the film a little babby, or watching Onision's Infinity War video, which I didn't end up talking about. <laughs> Ends me. So to anyone who's gonna say to me, Jay, it's, it's just his opinion, he's allowed his opinion. Yeah, I respect that. And this is just my opinion. Listen to him, listen to me, I don't care. Well, no, I do. But my first argument was oversaturation. I don't know how anyone can really defend this point, but I'll go through it anyway. We have Iron Man, you have the Hulk, Iron Man again, Thor, Captain America, Avengers, Iron Man again, Thor again, Captain America again, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers again. Okay, so you've got the point. He's listing all of the Marvel movies. And it's by no means a bad point. There are a lot of them. In fact, according to this article by Screen Rant, where I had to scroll past six separate ads to find one single number before realizing that the number was in the title all along, the total runtime of the MCU comes to just under 40 hours, and that's a lot of time. But is it too much time? Meh. Nah. It's significantly shorter than Breaking Bad or Adventure Time and in fact is significantly shorter than things like Doctor Who or the cumulative length of videos on your YouTube channel. Just because there's a lot of something doesn't mean you can't enjoy the little bits of it. Take for example the current run of DC movies. I don't think it's controversial to say they're not amazing and I've just been dipping in and out of this series when I've been hearing good things about the individual movies. This is why regardless of the media we're talking about, oversaturation has never really been a problem for me. And on top of that, as far as oversaturation goes, 40 hours really isn't that much. But honestly my my feelings so far when watching this video was just mild disagreement, with a healthy helping of, I guess that's just your opinion and that's fine, on the side. But then after he finishes listing all the MCU movies, he carries on the list for reasons I just don't understand. THOR AGAIN! And Black Panther. Oh, you thought that was it? No, 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 let's not forget about X-Men, Logan, Wolverine, X-Men, X-Men, X-Men. So at this point he lists basically every movie that's based on a Marvel property that exists, which honestly is just silly. I'd really understand your point if you were just talking about MCU films, because although some of them are quite different, I'd say the majority of them have quite a similar tone and quite similar humour. I mean, some people just get bored of the same continuity after a while. It seems to me like what you're tired of is superhero movies, which is fine, but that is the only real meaningful similarity between all the films you just listed. I mean, they do all have the Marvel sticker on them, sure, but they've been produced by different teams, they have different directors, fully different casts in most of them, which makes me wonder why this is a complaint about Marvel. Why are you not talking about superhero movies? Oh, I just couldn't enjoy Logan because after having seen The Fantastic Four, oh, I'm just tired of that kind of movie. Is the problem here really that they're both Marvel properties? This is such an arbitrary distinction to make. Hey, PewDiePie, do you want some toast? Sure, don't butter it though. This is what PewDiePie sounds like. What? Why not? I had a banana earlier. Okay. And... Well, I'm really tired of foods that are yellow. What? But that's a completely arbitrary... Ah! Screaming is funny, right? Right? It is. I should put this in. Now, don't get me wrong. I really liked superhero movies uh, growing up. Spider-Man, for example, I thought was so cool to see a superhero movie that I recognized on the big screen for the very first time. It wasn't something I was familiar with before, and I just thought that concept was really, really cool. But then once you watch 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you sort of get that... They're all the same movie, packaged differently. They all follow the same story and concept at the end of the day. Sure, Deadpool is a very different superhero than Spider-Man, 
But at the end of the day, all of these films can be summarized as superhero has superpowers, supervillain has superpowers, superhero wants peace, supervillain wants destruction, they fight, and superhero wins. Hooray! This formula is just so incredibly vague that if you took out the word superpowers from it, you could basically apply it to almost any mainstream movie. If you ignore everything about the films, like tone, direction, dialogue, plot details that aren't completely superficial, character, themes, and everything else about the film except the fact that the hero wins, the bad guy wants destruction, and they both have superpowers, then they're both exactly the same. Hey, hey PewDiePie, right. Maybe when the formula you've come up with to say how all Marvel movies are the same, maybe if that formula applies to The Dark Knight, and then also the Captain Underpants movie, maybe... Just, just maybe the formula is a little too vague. Also, PewDiePie, in Deadpool, the bad guy doesn't really want destruction and the hero definitely doesn't want peace. So the formula, despite how incredibly vague it is, is also too specific to apply to just the two Marvel movies you used as an example. Please direct me to any one of these 30 movies that doesn't follow this format. Oh, I don't know, maybe the one you listed as an example. But Jay, isn't the fact that the villain wants to sell slaves instead of wanting destruction an incredibly superficial difference? Yes, it is. Just like how the whole formula is incredibly superficial. And digging deeper into the meat and the bone of the films, I won't get too much into every single aspect. But one thing that I personally don't enjoy about this Marvel movie specifically is that they rely so heavily on special effects. It just feels too unreal. It just feels too unrealistic. It's like I'm watching an animated film with nothing really artistically interesting or impressive about it. As opposed to Dark Knight, for example, where... Where you watch this scene and you're like, whoa, they actually did flip a giant truck in the middle of New York City. So at the end of the day, this one is just very subjective and you can't really fault someone for not liking reliance on CGI. I mean, in my opinion, the fact that you don't like it doesn't mean it's not incredibly impressive. Especially since I just didn't realize that a lot of the buildings in the background of the Avengers were CGI. I thought they'd filmed an actual city and then just put CGI in for the damage to the city. I didn't realize the whole thing was CGI. But no, I guess just flipping over a truck is much more impressive. My next point, which is the cult surrounding the Marvel movies. It's freaky. It's weird. It's a guy dressed in a suit. You're screaming at a guy dressed in a suit. That's right, we now get to the part where PewDiePie judges a piece of media based on its fan base. Something that it's definitely always a really good idea to do. I mean, at least in my experience, the Marvel fan base hasn't even been that bad. They've just been very passionate at times, which is fine. It's something you expect from a fan base, especially one so large. The most passionate members of it will be incredibly passionate. And that's true of basically any fan base of that size. I mean, take, for example, the clip on screen right now. Let's play that with the audio. This is one of the two clips that PewDiePie uses to exemplify how there's a cult surrounding the Marvel movies. People cheering at the title card of a trailer for something they're excited for. They are passionate, yeah. It's almost as if they're huge fans in a room of other people cheering. Who wouldn't cheer in that situation? This is the best example you could find of a fan base being freaky in 2018? I mean, some Star Wars quote unquote fans bullied an actor who appeared in one of the new films off of social media. But the Marvel fans cheered at a trailer. Oh no. But Felix, it's my childhood. I grew up watching I grew up reading comic books. A lot of people have said this argument to me as well that they just grew up with comic books and that's why they get so excited about it. But I don't really get that either, to be honest. I practically grew up playing World of Warcraft. I couldn't care less about the Warcraft movie. At this point, I really wish I'd watched this movie at some point so that I could make a joke about the quality of this film here. PewDiePie, basically what you're saying in this list of reasons you don't like something is that you don't like it because it has some passionate fans. It's 2018, this applies to fucking everything. 
moving on to my next point, which I brought up in my original video, which is we need to stop fetishizing the idea of idolizing superheroes. I genuinely think it's damaging. <laughs> what? That's right. PewDiePie, a man who definitely never made this video, what are you talking about? Is complaining that, oh, it's possible that maybe this might have a bad influence on some of the people who consume it. Oh no! How terrible that someone has made something that, although the intentions weren't harmful, it's possible that people could interpret it in a way that's harmful. Especially when that audience is comprised of very young people looking up to the people in the media they're consuming. I mean, I don't even want to get into the can of worms that is that video. At least not without thinking about it a lot and dedicating an entire video to it. But it seems PewDiePie has taken a stance on this kind of behaviour, and he's firmly against it. If something is potentially damaging, even though this, like, almost certainly isn't, and I'll get to that, that's a worthy reason not to like something. I genuinely think it's damaging, and I said this because they're not real, and everyone just completely jumped on me saying, Well, Felix, anime isn't real, so what's your- <laughs> My point wasn't that it wasn't real. My point is that it's super... They have superpowers, right? It's not achievable to have superpowers. Ah yes, superheroes are rubbish idols because it's impossible to get superpowers. If someone idolizes, for example, Captain America, I'm sure they'll skip right past his selflessness, his dedication to his cause, his motivation, and jump straight on to wishing they were strong enough to crush a melon between their thighs. You're idolizing something that's impossible. Yes, Felix, people know that. People know that you can't really get superpowers. That's why they're called superpowers and not just powers. No one is seeing Iron Man and then going, I'm going to try to do that thing where he builds the iron suit and flies. I mean, maybe some people are, but they are such a minority that saying you don't like Marvel movies because of them is ridiculous. You're idolizing a personal trait that just has been given to them most of the times for free. Yeah, just like Iron Man who got his powers for free by using his genius and technical ingenuity to build a suit that gave him no weight. Just like Captain America who got his powers for free by proving that he was completely selfless, motivated, and mo- No, um, just like Star-Lord who got his powers by being trained by pirates his whole life. Just like Thor who in the first Thor movie has to prove that he's worthy of keeping his powers by being selfless. No, just like Doctor Strange who got his powers by- by studying really hard. Ah, uh, just, uh, just like Gamora, who only has her skills because of the abusively intense training she received. Just like Hulk, who was only in the situation where he got his powers by being one of the most genius researchers in his field. I mean, that that's kind of closer to what you were saying, I guess. Just like War Machine, who got his powers by being a trustworthy... No? Just like Groot? Yeah, actually, yeah, kind of. Hey, he's just kind of born with his power. Yeah, we found one! Hooray! You said most of them. Most of them got their powers for free. No, that's not true. Have you watched the films you're criticizing? If you want to bring up anime again, then at least Naruto worked hard to get his powers. Oh yeah, wouldn't that be nice to see? A hero who works hard to get their powers in the MCU. What a shortage of those we have. If only some of those existed in Marvel. He didn't just get superpowers by bitting up a goddamn spider. Okay, j let's drop the whole anime point. My point is that what's, what's so admirable about idolizing a superhero? What is the positive message? Okay, okay, pew, pews, pew. Pewdie, pewdie boy. Pew. <laughs> you see how people are idolizing characters like Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, and granted, yes, also Spider-Man, who was just bitten by a spider, but they're not, unless they're really weird, idolizing characters like Ronan, Thanos, The Vulture, Wh Whiplash, Killmonger, and... Dormammu. All of these characters are super powered as well, but they don't have people idolizing them. Maybe that has something to do with the fact that people are idolizing the Marvel heroes for the fact that they're heroes, and not for the fact that they're super powered. What about a superhero movie that tackles the idea of what really is good and what really is evil? Oh wait, they already did that and it sure as hell wasn't Marvel. You either die a hero or you'll live long enough to see yourself become a villain. There are good superhero movies still, I, I'm not... I'm not denying that, but Marvel just are so shallow. They all just rely on looking cool and having quirky and dumb jokes everywhere and never giving you something actually of substance. 
that's why I get so bored watching them. And 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 don't get me wrong, I'm not even a DC fanboy. Like, I'd, I've given up on that as well. This is a silly thing to say. There's plenty of stuff of substance in Marvel films. Take Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, for example, which is honestly a really moving piece about the nature of family. Or Logan, which apparently counts, which was, you know what, this video is going on long enough without you getting me started on why Logan is amazing. But if you're saying that all of the Marvel movies are shallow, just like I said last week, it's not the movies that are shallow, it's your understanding of them that is. Congrats to the entire Black Panther team! Because of you, young people will finally see superheroes that look like them on the big screen. Way to put more emphasis on race than what is necessary at all. That's right, I can't idolize uh, anime figures because I'm not Japanese. That's just impossible. Oh, that's right. I can't idolize Lightning McQueen from Cars 1 and 2 because he's a vehicle of transportation and I'm just a mere mortal human being. Why not teach kids that their own morals and values comes from themselves? and not from their skin. Wow, that was a really good straw man. I don't like Marvel movies because Michelle Obama likes the fact that one of the heroes is black. Basically, if you actually watch Black Panther, you know, actually watch the film instead of just listening to the things that people who aren't even related to the production of the film are saying about it, you will see that at no point is the message you can only idolize people of your race. There is, of course, discussion of race in the film, but most of that comes from the villain. A villain whose ideology T'Challa is actively fighting against. The movie is actually a discussion of morals and values. And Killmonger, the villain, ties his morals and values to the colour of his skin. T'Challa, the hero, doesn't. You've just seen a film with some black people in it and gone, Ah! Oh no! People are happy that they're being represented in films racially! Why can't they focus on other things? I'm going to exaggerate their happiness about being represented until it becomes a harmful message. A message that the themes of the movie are actually against. Even if this idea was so great, why did it take 18 films for Black Panther to come out? Is it because social politics is more popular than ever and it's actually very monetizable? Or is it because they actually want to do something good and positive? I would like to bring up that just clearly the MCU has been planning a Black Panther film for a very long time. I remember that Wakanda was mentioned in Age of Ultron, but even if it wasn't, it seems to me like they've just been adapting the comic book characters in the order that they think they need them for the story, as well as, of course, in order of their popularity. According to this source that I'll link below, Black Panther is the 47th most popular hero in the comics. Considering that a large amount of the heroes that are more popular than Black Panther are ones that Marvel doesn't have the rights to anymore, like Wolverine, ones that they're adapting in the same continuity but on TV instead, like Luke Cage, ones that would distinctly have to come later in the story, like Miles Morales, and characters that just wouldn't fit in the same continuity as the MCU, like Spider-Man 2099, it seems pretty reasonable that at this point they're just now getting to adapting Black Panther. And if it's so admirable, why hasn't there been a fe female superhero movie yet? Why? I know that's coming out, but it's like, after what, 20 of them? Why hasn't there been a Mexican superhero yet? Why do they have a black superhero, but not a female superhero? Oh no! It's almost as if they're faithfully adapting the comic book characters in the order that they need them. It's trying too hard to be diverse. And if it's trying to be diverse, why isn't it more diverse? Surely if you think it's a problem that it's trying to be diverse, PewDiePie, you would think that it was more of a problem if it was more diverse. No? Last but not least, uh, in Infinity War, apparently a big deal of the movie is that a lot of superheroes die. We, I'm not gonna spoil which ones or anything like that, but let's just entertain the idea that, uh, let's say, Iron Man dies in, uh, in Infinity War. Do you actually, and people are treating this like this is a really big deal, but do you actually think they're gonna just then stop making Iron Man movies? Do you think that franchise is just somehow completely gone? They're gonna be prequels, they're gonna be different new reiterations, different actors. They're still making Spider-Man movies. Okay, so granted, I think that probably all of the characters that were clicked away in Infinity War have a chance to come back. I don't think you're supposed to think that those characters are permanently gone. That doesn't mean that deaths that clearly are final when they arrive, like for example, spoilers, Loki's death, have any less impact. It's not the vague idea of the character that people are attached to. No one saw Loki's death and went, it's okay, they'll probably adapt this comic again in maybe 15, 20 years, and then a new actor will play Loki. People were invested in this iteration of the character. They care about him. Just like in literally any other kind of media, say something that you actually like, 
if a character dies, it means something because the character is gone. And the death would still be just as impactful even if the story was retold in 15 or 20 years. Doctor Who is a great example of why people care about this kind of thing. Every so often when the actor playing the Doctor decides to step down, the Doctor as a character will regenerate into a new actor. The basic beats of the character will still be the same, but the more specific personality traits, things that actually come from the actor rather than the writing, and also some of the writing, will be different. People don't say, oh, I don't care, there'll be more Doctor Who, so why should I give a shit? People are sad to see the version of the character that they've come to know and love go away. That's sort of the point. As long as they keep making money, it's not going to stop. And to me, personally, there's something very unappealing about that. It, it sort of lacks any form of artistic integrity. Hey, PewDiePie, remember when you said you were going to delete your channel when you reached 50 million subscribers? Do, do you remember that? Why should anyone care if clearly you're just going to keep making videos afterwards? If you're still making money, why would you stop? It sort of lacks any artistic integrity. You know what, I, I'm done at this point. There's not much more of the video left to go, and he doesn't say much more in it. So I'm done. At this point where he's complained about the Marvel movies doing something that they don't actually really do, but he does, yeah, I'm done. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you have, you'll probably be pleased to find out that I'm planning on making more content like this. Although, I need more videos to talk about. I don't really have any. So if you know any videos where someone criticizes some popular media unfairly, in your opinion, then please send it my way and let me know. I'll see you on Wednesday. A goodbye.